Chuck, we got an emergency explainer. We got to do like right now. Oh, wow. Emergency. 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 There was an underwater volcano that gave a tsunami warning to the entire west coast of North America. What's up with that? Um, okay. Sounds to me like a great movie. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But I don't know anything about volcanoes, but we do know someone who does. Yes. And that is Natalie Starkey, friend of Star Talk. Natalie, welcome back to the hi. show. Hi, hi Neil, hi Chuck. So good to be Excellent. Here. Excellent. You're a cosmo chemist. I love that on a business card. Uh author most recently of Fire and Ice, Volcanoes of the Solar System. You are the person we need for this show. Good. And it's not a show, this is just an explainer. We only got a few minutes. So Apparently, an underwater volcano erupted recently. Tell us what happened here. Yeah, it was massive. This is the problem. It's, uh, it is currently now underwater. Previously, it was also above the waters. So there was an island in you know, the middle of the Pacific, uh, near Tonga, and uh, it blew its top. And basically, the whole volcano, the whole island has disappeared in that one eruption of 10 megatons. It was absolutely enormous. It created an ash cloud that went up to... 130,000 feet so wow. it's a really big event now that this island although it, it, it has a name but did it did it have inhabitants no completely uninhabited it's one of not anymore <laughs> well <laughs> it's i mean it, it, it's appeared out of the ocean a number of times and sort of been eroded away by the ocean so it's always kind of playing with that ocean level quite a bit and so it's never been a big island um but what's happened here is that you know it, it's kind of it's been inhabited by plants and things before but no humans um but it's just a really crazy setting it, it's a very very active volcano and when it goes it goes really really big so this but, but is natalie it's just it's just it's just accidental that it's underwater. There are volcanoes everywhere. If it just happens to be underwater, it's not a special kind of volcano. Is that correct? No, I mean, a lot of the volcanoes actually begin underwater. We have obviously volcanoes on land, and then we have volcanoes that start on the base of oceans and grow large enough to become, you know, a volcano above the land, you know. All like the, like the entire islands. Hawaiian island chain. Exactly. Correct? They're all yeah. undersea volcanoes that then have become so large they've risen above the sea. So it happens all the time. Now, one of the issues is when you're at that kind of level where you're a little bit below the ocean and then sometimes above the ocean is that the water from the sea can infiltrate the you know the vent of that volcano which is under the water and when you mix water with really really hot magma you're going to create what we call phreatomagmatic explosions which is what's okay, happened here right. magma mixing with water. hey 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 first of all watch your mouth young lady <laughs> Second of all, what the Should hell? Should we get magmatic you? on Star Talk? That's yeah. all. Right. What did you just say? What? <laughs> what kind of reaction? So it's phreato magmatic. So this is water and magma mixing. So you have got to remember this magma is at you know a thousand degrees Celsius or more. And if you put a little bit of water into that, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have a massive explosion. And this is how you create. You know, you just literally fracture rock and magma into pieces, and that's what. No, let me tell you what I learned from you: that lava that hasn't come out of the volcano yet is called magma. Is exactly. that correct? Yeah, exactly. Ah, and I got that seat, Chuck. I, mean, I know what I'm talking about. With this eruption, <laughs> there was there was no lava with this eruption. It just, it didn't even get to that stage. It just completely exploded. That magma just completely exploded into the sky. So, um, yeah. Wow. So how many, how many of these we have around the world that we should keep an eye on? I mean, loads of them. Uh, within any year, we have maybe 50 or 60, you know, volcanic eruptions. We don't always notice them when they're very big like this and they create a pressure wave that goes around the world and we can detect that and we can see it from space. We saw, you know, that huge ash cloud from space, from satellite imaging. Um, you know, it's a big one. You're going to notice it. But most of the time we've got eruptions happening that aren't particularly noticeable. This was just a very big one that created a very big blast and tsunamis. When you have a pressure wave through Earth, you guys measure that with all your sensors. But if you have a pressure wave in the ocean, that has different consequences, right? Mm. Yeah, and actually, so there's there's two different kinds of pressure waves created. When that volcano erupted, it literally just displaced the air. So we saw a wave travel through the atmosphere of a pressure wave that was created from that explosion. But we also think there was maybe tsunamis created from the volcano itself collapsing. Now, we're still not sure because we haven't been able to get on, you know, to that location and have a look at what's actually happened. And now it's all underwater, so we can't really see. But 
we think uh, currently that the volcano collapsed, displaced water, and that could have created the tsunamis that we think have happened, but we're still waiting for that ground data from all those regions because Tonga's been cut off um, from communications. Wait, you don't know if there was a tsunami? It seems to me that'd be an obvious, at least in the movies, it's kind of obvious when the tsunami comes. Yeah, right? we, we, it seems like Tonga was almost inundated with tsunamis. And we also saw big waves, um, you know, hitting the coast of America. So for sure, um, there were tsunamis emanating from it. But we don't know the cause at the moment exactly. We don't know whether um, it was the volcano itself collapsing to create that, you know, that big wave initially. Well, what else? what else would it be? It, it almost certainly is that, um, but it could have been created from that pressure wave initially. Um, it's just, you know, before we get that ground data, it's really hard. All we can see from this volcano is what we can see from space um, at the moment. And we, we now have aircraft, I think, from New Zealand. They're traveling over to have a look at what's going on. And what they can see at the moment is there was an island there and there's no longer an island. So whatever was there has completely blown. blown so, so, Natalie, it's one thing. Okay. Yes, we know you care about what might have caused the tsunami but people affected by the tsunami are not asking that same question mm. <laughs> they just right. want to know is the tsunami coming and how bad is it going to be yeah and so can, what, can what, what measurements do we know of so far and how long did it take for that wave to get from its location to the coast yeah, so it wouldn't have taken very long because, I mean, Tonga is quite a, a small, I mean, it's the islands are spread out over a large region, but ultimately it's quite in a small part. And so that ash cloud actually covered pretty much all of Tonga. The ash cloud itself, the extent of it was the same size as the UK. So it's it's really, really large as it came up. So the tsunamis that came out from, from that eruption um, would have hit those islands very, very quickly. It's very easy to predict um, kind of how how high those waves are going to be and what well, sorry no it's very easy to predict how fast they're going to travel but not how high they're going to be because that depends very much on the local kind of topography of the land on, in the ocean so we know that yeah. it, you know we know when it will get to certain places those waves but we don't know how big those waves were it seems now from evidence on the ground that we're hearing from the Tongan government that um you know all the coastal areas were inundated and a lot of land and, and buildings have been destroyed um and probably so, lies, so just to be clear, just don't know. you're dialing into Star Talk now from the UK. Yes. But many people listening are Americans, and we don't know how big the UK is. You oh, said the goodness. cloud was as big as the UK. Can you give us a state that resembles that? A, oh, a state in the US, goodness. Is uh, it bigger than Texas? <laughs> no. it, that's what I want. Is it bigger than Texas? Because if it ain't bigger than Texas, it ain't big. Not, it ain't big. <laughs> We, we have this thing in the UK where we compare everything to Wales, and that's going to mean even less to you. So less, like, I know, right? It's like... <laughs> it's smaller than California. I think the UK... And not the mammalian whales. You mean Wales, the... The, 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 the country the... that's full of sheep and, yeah, on the, uh, <laughs> yes. the western coast of the UK. So uh, not helpful at all, I realize. <laughs> so it seems to me, we, I mean, we've heard about tsunamis in recent decades that were caused by underwater... Uh, or, 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 or earthquakes that would take place underwater. And this, I guess, displaces water, mm -hmm. creates a wave. So are volcanic tsunamis less dangerous than earthquake tsunamis? They're not less dangerous, they're just less common. So it's much less common that a volcano will collapse into the ocean or collapse under the ocean and create, um, you know, push water out of the way and create a tsunami. It does happen, but it's, it's not particularly common. But the earthquake generated ones are, are much more common. Obviously, we saw that. We've seen that quite a lot um, in the past. Uh, but it, yeah, I guess it was the what we call the Boxing Day tsunami. Again, I think that's another British term I'm talking about. Uh, December 26th. And there was a movie about that. Um, and, and that was a big, big tsunami that hit. Um, it was in okay, Tunisia, so our, wasn't our it? Crack researchers have told us that um, the UK is about the size of Alabama. Oh, OK. Interesting. Yeah. So, so, so Natalie, is this... Um, do are volcanoes on Earth as interesting to you as volcanoes elsewhere in the solar system? Yeah, I mean, completely, because we can study them so much easier. Like, you know, even this volcano, which um, scientists have used as a case study for studying volcanoes in space, because it's so inaccessible. The, only, the main way we study it is by satellite, which exactly is exactly the way we study volcanoes in space, because we can only study them by satellite. We don't go there personally. So we can look at how this volcano um, has erupted over time and how, you know, plants colonize it over time. Um, and we can compare that to what we see, say, on Mars and what might have happened in the past on Mars. So the volcanoes on Earth are just brilliant because they give us this testing ground. We can get to them much more easily, but they allow us to compare what we then see in space. 
But Chuck, you heard she said the plants colonize it first, then right. the Europeans colonize it, then they <laughs> enslave the plants. Exactly. And that's how that goes, that's right? That's how it goes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> um, Natalie, do I remember some photos of you with like volcano outfits on entering the calderas of of extinct volcanoes or, or, or dormant volcanoes? Do uh, I, am, I, am I picturing that correctly? No, no, and active volcanoes. So I've worked on... Oh, don't, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in the Caribbean, I've worked on active volcanoes, you know, where you're literally standing next to this, this vent at a volcano that's roaring away with all the gases and steams that are, are coming out of it. Um, and, you know, it's an incredibly exciting environment to, to be in. As okay, I have to channel anyway. Chuck here and say... Not a place where the bro- you find the brothers. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> Not gonna happen. It's, you know, there's there's common sense, and then there's black sense, <laughs> which is even more sensible. It's even more sensible than common sense. Yeah. Say, let's go into the caldera of that active volcano. Won't that be fun? Yes, and then and then the answer is. Have a good time. <laughs> I'll meet yeah. you back at the cabana when yeah, you're done. Exactly. I'll be drinking a coconut when you get back. <laughs> uh, so, so, Natalie, t- uh, tell me um, in, in your book, which is which is really the uh, an amazing clearinghouse of of information about uh, just volcanoes of all kinds. Uh, just re- remind us uh, just before we end here. Not all volcanoes are hot. Mm, right. And just, just yeah. remind us how you get a cold volcano, because that's the well, subtitle yeah. of your book, Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice. Exactly. So we, we have what we call cryo volcanoes, so ice volcanoes. And actually, there's possibly more ice volcanoes in the solar system that are active than we have hot volcanoes, which kind of seems mad because we have we, that's all we know on our own planet. But, you know, let's go out to somewhere like Enceladus or Europa or, you know, Pluto. But we, we find in these places volcanoes made of ice so instead of rock we erupt water or we erupt ammonia or nitrogen like whatever these worlds are made of and these are mostly moons I'm talking about um we can erupt whatever they're made of onto the surface and that becomes their lava instead of rocky lava or ash so yeah so what causes the the actual eruption on those uh, I mean is it the same pressure I mean I call volcanoes pimple popping on earth stop you know stop it's like the earth just popped the pimple stop stop "Ah," stop you know (laughs) got a little build up under here let me get rid of it you know what happens on these other planets that ice becomes the the way i look at it is that actually all volcanoes are doing the same thing and they're releasing heat from inside of that body so they just it's just a way for a planet or a moon to cool itself down they all have heat within them that heat wants to move because of physics. It just wants to move to somewhere colder. And in doing so, it will, you know, erupt whatever the material is that that, that planet or moon is made of. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And so just a matter of pressures at any temperature. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you've got liquid, if you've got, you know, ice, uh, water ice, and you want to melt that, you don't need to heat it to as high a temperature as you'd need to heat rock to create lava. So you just, it's different temperatures we're talking about, but we're still talking about heat moving and moving material in the process. Wow, that's, that's and pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, we got to call it quits there. Natalie, thank you for explaining like current events to us. And give me the full name of that volcano. Oh, no. Okay, so it's Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai. It's the last bit I'm not too sure about. Um, but it's basically, it's the two names of what was the two islands that then got connected with the volcano in the middle. So yeah, I, um, I'm not yeah. sure if you're familiar with uh, the Bugs Bunny cartoon, but that's very Bugs Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> hunga Tunga, Hunga Hunga. Well, that's that's you know. that uh, Looney Tunes. Yeah, that's why that's they're called Looney, Looney Tunes. Tunes. That's a Looney Tunes <laughs> bit right there. Right. I've probably right. butchered the name for any Tongans. I apologize to, um, how, you know, it's probably not pronounced exactly like that. Right. And yes, Chuck should be apologizing, right. but he's a comedian. So he's not. <laughs> well, listen, I butcher names on this show every <laughs> single time we're on. So welcome to the club. <laughs> All right, Natalie, it's always good to know you're in arm's reach of us when we need emergency accounting of what's going on on this planet and others. So thanks for being on Star Talk Explainer, Thank as you. always. All right. Chuck, always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, another Star Talk Explainer. Keep looking up.